Hi, my name is Ken Davidian, and welcome to season two of Organization Theory in Space. During this season, I'm making a video every week that covers each chapter in the Oxford Handbook of Organizational Change and Innovation, second edition, edited by Marshall Scott Poole and Andy Vandeven. This video covers chapter 32 of the handbook, entitled From Resistance to Resilience, which revisits chapter 29 to give a more nuanced treatment of the resistance and how it's connected to the property of resilience. We're now into the last part of the handbook, so these chapters will be a little shorter than all the previous chapters. There are two commonplace assumptions in management scholarship that are not necessarily good assumptions. The first is that change efforts often fail. And second, that resistance is a given in any change effort. Chapter 29 of this handbook talks about the dark side of change and the resulting resistance to that change. The rationale that change is perceived negatively is based on that first assumption that most change efforts fail. The question of whether or not the change agents are indeed malevolent, acting with the intent to do harm, is not fully developed in the chapter. Some re research shows that mistaken acts, especially those acts that can lead to the perception of a change's dark side, are not originally mistakes, but they become mistaken as events progress. In other words, a change effort can unknowingly stray into the dark side over time, even though there was never any intention for it to go there in the first place. This points to the idea that change is a series of actions and activities, not one single event. The volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and even equivocality of emerging situations can lead to the change journey straying into darker territory. Despite constant challenge, the second assumption that resistance is unavoidable still dominates the thinking of scholars and practitioners alike. Like most things, a clear and concise definition of resistance is elusive. Sometimes it's, it's seen as willful opposition or a sensible reaction, which shows how it can either have a negative or a positive effect. From the negative perspective, resistance can be seen as a way to prevent a change effort or as a refusal to accept or comply with a change effort. Seen in the positive light, resistance can be characterized as resilience or the ability to not be affected by change, helping to maintain stability, equilibrium, and predictability. There are some assertions as to why this belief persists, that resistance is unavoidable, including as a way for practitioners to shift blame away from themselves once the change effort fails, or maybe it's a way for academicians to ensure the continuation of research funding for resistance research. Many models depict change as an exceptional event amid some perceived state of equilibrium. However, change is often described as an accumulation of persisting micro events that actually ensure the stability of a system or organization over time. In this perspective, systems that operate smoothly in what might be perceived as equilibrium are in fact constantly changing. If a situation is not running smoothly, it gets labeled as encountering resistance when in fact the reactions to reinstate the organization's smooth operation, its resistance to change is a form of resilience. Therefore, it's not the lack of change, but kind of the opposite, continuous change that leads to the smooth operation of an organization. And this is called resilience. In terms of further research, it is alongside the frontline workers, the practitioners whose job it is to enact processes and procedures in the face of reality, who are making micro adjustments and changes to make sure that the efficacy of those processes is high where the signals of their resistance to change in the form of resilience can be studied and identified. Well, that's it from this chapter. I told you it was going to be a quick one. Anyways, I hope you found it as interesting as I did. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of the future videos, please subscribe or hit the notification bell and check out the playlist of Otis Season 2 uh, to make sure that you can go back and watch any video you might have missed in the past. Thanks! OT in Space was produced by IRL, which stands for Impossible Research LLC. IRL conducts process research on the topics of innovation and industry emergence within the space sector context. IRL also offers services of organization theory consulting, research consulting, and STEAM outreach. This video is intended for educational purposes only.